inevitably uh, shift to uh, phase two of devolution and we have already started some conversations on this that you're aware we go back to the earlier slide the fact that uh, the leader of uh, knows that he's on health and social care portfolio responsibility there's a hint in the title there about the fact that we might be looking at uh, phase two devolution around that kind of uh, set of issues obviously a load of details <coughs> Um, there's some uh, things that we'll be looking to you 
streamline some of the decision making and some of the resource issues associated with that. Uh, there's a lot of detail, uh, as members will be aware, around housing uh, that we popped up in the, in the headlines that we uh, got some agreements on for phase one, but phase two, we're looking to convert more detail and more certainty and clarity around some aspects of that. And the one that we continue to uh, chip away at is fiscal devolution, which is obviously designed to seek to secure more funding certainty for the local city region and constituents authorities uh, into the future. And there's a, a number of uh, items that we've uh, uh, scheduled for discussion and negotiation with the governments, most of which we uh, expect that they'll probably tone down, uh, but we will nonetheless continue to uh, ask because I think it's the right thing that we uh, do in that kind of space. Uh, for instance, just to, to make it uh, more uh, real, particularly for an audience <laughs> one this morning, um, the potential for a bed tax linked to uh, hotel accommodation, for instance, is something that we have been very keen on in the city region, and a couple of other city regions have pushed for it as well. Have done so far to turn that down, but we continue to press for that because that will make a massive contribution in terms of uh, uh, offsetting some of the financial pressures that each of the authorities has. Services. Um, I've touched on this really, Chair. It's about uh, using the devolution uh, opportunity and the uh, collaboration that it brings with it locally to see if we can streamline and make improvements in children's services areas. This is an area that's uh, been part of the example for us. And again, for those of you who have been on today, we'll be in position to answer that in a second or two. Licensing and regulation skipped over this a minute ago. Uh, environmental crimes are a good example of that, whether we can uh, secure an agreement. financial difficulties in terms of cleaning up and uh, 
steps. Uh, phase two, we, we will begin the formal negotiations in the kind of parameters uh, that are set out here. I assume we will set them as a group, uh, roughly what I've done and set out this morning. We will report back as much uh, detail as we can, both in phase one implementation, as I said earlier in the presentation, and any traction that, uh, that would look like we're able to secure through phase two. questions that can I thank you for that presentation and could we note that please? If we then uh, move on to uh, item five and there is going to be a, uh, a presentation on uh, the state of the Liverpool City region report making the most of the evolution so uh, if we can have uh, that presentation Chairs, me again. Um, uh, I apologise in advance because I will be uh, using uh, slavishly the uh, slides or some of the slides that uh, Professor Parkinson used to introduce uh, the report that uh, he launched uh, a few weeks ago that some people in the room were, were uh, pointing to and others not. So what I've tried to do is uh, condense most of the uh, positioning and most of the messaging to give you an opportunity. 
probably should go next. How does he get there in, in the report view? It's not something that we might all agree with every single component of, but it's the report view. And, uh, and also, uh, the report sets out some how it believes that uh, devolution might help us to achieve the kind of improvements and the growth that we're looking for across the city region. Uh, just to emphasize, Chair, it's, it's independent and, uh, and was very comprehensive. Uh, and just to re emphasize the point at the very start, I love you replicating there. Messages that the report sets out. Uh, city regions delivered a lot uh, in the recent past, particularly, uh, but there's more opportunities uh, and more uh, to be done going forward. I think is probably what uh, one of the partners have already said. Uh, degree of uh, realism, but also uh, optimism. Uh, strategic long term relationships and priorities are clearer than they've been uh, in the past. Emphasizes some uh, commentary about the kind of uh, what he refers to as the values that underpin the, uh, the potential success of uh, the city region uh, through devolution. Uh, the ongoing strength of partnerships, generating more and clearer leadership, uh, distributing leadership, I think is probably the phrase that the report uh, would call for. So it's not just the local authorities, uh, but the opportunity for the combined authority as it has done over the recent months in terms of. up on strategies that um, we've had uh, two main strategies uh, in and around the city region, relatively speaking, and uh, two main strategies rather than not enough action, I think is uh, again how the report uh, kind of would describe it. Uh, Professor Parkinson has this phrase about boats, beetles, brains and marrows, there's a kind of uh, a nice uh, synergy and flow to that. to improve community. 
existing strategies, kind of, and synergize, sorry to use that, but synergize, streamline some of the 40 odd strategies that exist uh, still as, as live documents at the moment, most of which unfortunately sit on shelves rather than actually informing actions in the way that I described a minute ago. The need to create uh, clear business investment plans that are part of the implementation uh, action plans that I referred to in the previous presentation, Chair, just to make sure that we are aligned to that. section of operational issues and so we need to uh, secure more streamlined organization for better intelligence analysis and investment. This report is actually the bedrock for that going forward and one of the things that we will be looking to the university to agree to is to continue to maintain that intelligence and analysis on our behalf because they've got access to a lot more uh, information and intelligence and stats that we have I think I would argue I've got more capacity possibly intelligence to, uh, to challenge that, to articulate it, and later and present it to us. Uh, delivery, delivery, delivery is what the report refers to and uh, does pick up the challenge that we recognise ourselves, which is the need to invest in capacity, to organise that capacity, and to make sure that that capacity is used to its optimum uh, in the future <coughs> to achieve what we think we're capable of achieving through the city region. Uh, and then uh, it also has a
from, from anybody uh, with regards to the report, or should we just agree for the recommendation to put it to note it and we'll respond in, in the way and share that with you? Yeah. Can we agree that? All right, thank you uh, very much. Um, moving on then to um, the single growth uh, strategy progress uh, update. Again, this was discussed at the recent left meeting. The work is underway to produce a single uh, growth strategy for the city region. Uh, Gillian Bishop has an update for us on progress. Uh, so, there's a, another presentation. But, Gillian, uh, can you give us that update, please? Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everybody. As, um, as, as colleagues hopefully will remember, in, in December, you commissioned the LEP to undertake the, the single growth strategy. Um, so, we wanted to bring you uh, an update this morning in terms of, of progress to date. Initially, in terms of the, the, the rationale for the, uh, for, the, for the strategy, and I think Jed outlined a, a number of those points this morning. Um, from a, a strategy session uh, at the LAP Away Day in November and then a further workshop in December, colleagues in this room and, and, and wider um, uh, stakeholders identified the need uh, to align the strategies that we've got in the city region at the moment. I think Jed referred to kind of 40 odd that we've got and the need really to think about how we bring together and align those key visions and the key aspirations for the city region. And it felt now that this is the opportune time with the work that we're doing on devolution to do that and to create a single vision, a single core focus for the city region going forward around growth, but making sure that what we do is build upon the asset base, the strengths that we've got, the successes that we've had to date, but in order then to think in the longer term in terms of what our growth aspirations are. So over the next 25, 30 years would be the kind of strategic visioning for the document, but that there would be clear, de clear deliverables in the short term as well. So we would, again, aligning with the, the work around the devolution implementation plan, think clearly about what we would deliver in the first five years in order sh to show tangible progress towards that vision. We will, alongside the strategy, have a clear implementation plan. So although the strategy that we're aiming to achieve will be ambitious, will actually give a, a clear strategic overview with strategic interventions, there will be a document that sits alongside it that will give clear deliverables and kind of clear measurables in terms of the, uh, the activity that we will be aiming to achieve. In developing the strategy, um, obviously what we wanted to ensure is that the work that we're doing now from, a, from both a timeline point of view, but in terms of making the connections, <coughs> aligns with the, the devolution activity. So we've been obviously making sure that the, the portfolios and the, and the, the leads around the, the chief exec activity is now factored into our thinking on the development of the, of the growth strategy. And also, as we'll hear later in the agenda today, the context of uh, the Northern powerhouse, transport for the north, and how will the growth strategy that we're developing make sure that it is within the context of the opportunities that are being highlighted uh, through those uh, key conversations. Work that we've done so far has been to ensure that we uh, start to raise awareness of the work that's being done around the growth strategy, and we've had really positive feedback from colleagues that we've engaged with uh, to talk through the ambition and, and the objectives of the, of, of the growth strategy. We have now got in place a, a strategy team that's going to be working across those key themes to make sure that the growth strategy and its development uh, links to the work that's going on at the moment and also uh, absolutely links to the ambition of those key themes and the work that's been undertaken through some of those strategies to date. As Jed mentioned, the, the work of uh, the universities through the, uh, the, the State of the City Region report will provide the key context as well as other uh, activities for the, the, the single growth strategy. Uh, Michael himself has supported uh, the next steps from his work through, the, uh, through uh, uh, recognising the work on the growth strategy and will actually personally support the development of the, uh, the growth strategy over the next few months. So how is the document starting to come together in terms of the emerging structure of the document? Clearly what we have to recognise is the context within which the strategy will be developed. And first and foremost, as you would expect, um, the, the key findings, observations, recommendations, learning from the State of the City Region report uh, will be at the heart of the context and the key messages, key summary, I guess, of the challenges and opportunities that we've got in the City Region, as Michael articulates in terms of poverty and productivity. Recently, we've had the independent economic narrative from Northern Powerhouse produced by uh, 
Council will continue to do so. And we had last week the report of Centre for Cities, again, uh, as the Chair mentioned, where we heard the key headlines and things that we are uh, very familiar with uh, around the fact that we're low-wage, high welfare, and what we need to do is actually generate more wealth, increase businesses, and create jobs. So they're the, the context within which the strategy is being developed. As a result, the emerging uh, response to uh, those challenges and opportunities, as you can see there, is where we're starting to think about the, the shape of the strategy going forward. So that the pillars <coughs> will be around jobs and business, where will future growth come from? It will actually come from creating more jobs, supporting more businesses, and attracting investment into the city region. We will do that by building on our strengths, those key sectors that you can see there. The seven highlighted, they're the ones that we've been working on to date, with the top four being the ones that again relate to the work that was highlighted through the uh, economic narrative for the Northern Powerhouse. The way within which we will actually achieve growth, so what are the, the themes that we will need to, uh, to drive forward to actually have that growth over the, the longer term. It is around innovation, how we actually invest in R&D, how do we become more competitive, exports, investment, um, and how do we ensure our kind of internal and external connectivity to maximise growth opportunities. As a result, what difference would that make? Again, you know, people and business are at the heart uh, of the growth strategy. Well, we would need to ensure that we would tackle some of those issues as the centre for cities identify by actually ensuring higher and increased skills to actually uh, maximise and take advantage of the jobs and the business growth, increase employment and productivity, and as a result then, make sure that our wage rates increase and shift dependence into What we want to achieve through the single growth strategy is, as I said at the beginning, a very clear single vision for where we're going as a, as a city region that articulates our purpose and our identity. And what the document aims to achieve is through a compelling evidence base, a real clarity of focus and the strategic interventions that we will need to put in place in order to deliver growth over the short and the longer term. What we will have is that clear timeline, and as I said before, we will have an implementation plan that will actually articulate how, in terms of the strategic interventions, the detail in terms of what and when will actually take place. So we want this as a roadmap for future investment, and we want to make it clear that this is around how the city region will grow, but also how it will put us on the global map. Next steps, where do we go from here? Well, with your permission, uh, if you uh, support the current position and the emerging framework, we will start then to actually work that up and quantify that uh, in terms of what do we mean in terms of some of the, uh, some of the specific uh, interventions, how would we actually uh, bring that vision to life. We need to continue to have conversations with stakeholders to ensure that they're informed of the work that's going on so that we can get the knowledge and intelligence in terms of the work that they've been doing um, to date. We will start to think about what that performance framework will look like so that we can align to the work that's happening on the devolution deal to make sure that they are, are working in tandem. And we will start then to think about uh, how we put mechanisms in place to ensure that the strategy, once it's delivered, can actually move forward and dovetail with the wider activity that's going on through yourselves in the combined authority. With your support, we'll bring a further update in March to let you know uh, the, uh, the next phase. And the aim is that we will bring a final document um, to the combined authority, AGM, in June for, uh, for approval <coughs> and hopefully the next application. 
Joe, and good morning everyone. Just a brief update really with regards to the activities of transport for the North Rail North and other transport um, elements that we've been working closely with Rob and his portfolio role on. Um, in terms of some of the general updates and some of the progress uh, that we've been doing since the devolution deal, uh, an update on Rail North, an update on transport for North are crucial the next steps we'll need to take forward. Very briefly, since the devolution deal uh, was signed, there's been a variety of things we've been doing to crack on with some of those new powers and work streams that we're getting. Because of the great certainty that we've been given over the special rail grant, we've been able to proceed with the Mersey Rail rolling stock project. Uh, that process is going very well. We've gone through a pre-qualification stage and five bidders have now qualified uh, to go to the next stage of bringing back their uh, proposals to us which of course will continue to keep uh, the combined authority uh, involved uh, on and appraised of and we hope that by the end of this calendar year we'll be able to bring the full recommendation back to the combined authority to award that tender to actually get on with building the brand new rolling stock that the Mersey Rail Network requires. Also on the bus uh, element, lots of work that we're doing on kicking off the actual business case work for a full franchise network across the city region and in the short term working very closely uh, with the bus operators on an alliance process to get some significant improvements to our local bus uh, network in the short term. And at the same time working closely with all of the districts on the development of that key road network that we know we need to deliver as part of the devolution deal. Equally, a lot of work going on with John Lennon Airport about how we connect with the airport much better, both in terms of the number of services but also how those services are marketed to make sure get an improved offer of connections into our airport, both from the land, but also at the same time some of the routes that potentially fly into the airport. Working closely as well with our colleagues in North Wales about connections in and out of North Wales, particularly in terms of direct rail services, because we know we've got to significantly improve the connections of the North Welsh economy into our own economy, and some detailed work uh, going ahead with regard to that. Also as well, uh, some very detailed and promising work with regard to the Wapping Tunnel, which is a disused railway tunnel underneath the city centre of Liverpool. Effectively what that means, if we can bring that back into operation, is we'll be able to link the Mersey Rail Network with the Northern Rail Network and have the ability to cross city region uh, rail services, uh, connecting uh, the rail network and meaning that people don't have to change services in the city centre. More specifically though, uh, Rail North, um, as members of the Combined Authority will know, this is a process that we've now been involved in for about three or four years in partnership with all of the transport authorities <coughs> right across the North of England and the Department for Transport. Um, as that process has developed, the next franchises which will commence from April this year have now been awarded. Arriva will be running the Northern Rail franchise and First Group will continue to run the Transpennine service, and that will be managed in a more devolved sense by a joint team that will be based in Leeds. What that means in practical terms is a significant improvement to the quality of local rail services right across the north of England. Some of the highlights include that over the next, uh, next few years, 500 brand new carriages will come to the north of England's rail network. The hated Pacer uh, fleet that is out there, those buses that have been running on rails, those will be going to the scrapyard in the next few years. And all of the existing fleet will be refurbished to as new standards. There will be a significant improvement in terms of the quality of rolling stock out on the North of England's rail network. In terms of services, some real benefits for the city region. Over the next few years, we'll be getting direct trains from Liverpool back to Scotland.